we will talk about prothrombin time, what it is, and what elevated or decreased prothrombin time means. We'll also cover when it is measured and why it is important, as well as how to normalize it with medications, supplements, and foods. Prothrombin, a small protein, is crucial for stopping bleeding. In other words, it's a critical factor in blood clot formation. Here's how it works, prothrombin is converted into thrombin. This thrombin activates fibrinogen, which is then converted into fibrin. Fibrin creates a mesh that traps platelets and other cells, forming a clot that stops bleeding. Clots can be problematic. They are necessary to stop bleeding, but if formed in the brain or heart, they can be life-threatening, leading to strokes or heart attacks. Decreased prothrombin time means the blood clots more quickly than normal, increasing the risk of embolization and unwanted clot formation. Elevated prothrombin time means the blood clots more slowly than normal, increasing the risk of excessive bleeding. Both scenarios require medical attention and treatment. When is prothrombin time measured? Liver diseases, conditions like hepatitis and cirrhosis can impair liver function. Since the liver synthesizes prothrombin, any decrease in its function can increase the risk of bleeding due to a deficiency in clotting factor production. Pre-surgical assessment to evaluate the risk of bleeding during or after surgery. Unexplained bleeding or bruising, prothrombin time is assessed to determine the cause. Anticoagulant therapy monitoring, for conditions like atrial fibrillation or deep vein thrombosis, where there's a risk of clot formation or pulmonary embolism, prothrombin time is measured to monitor and adjust anticoagulant therapy. Another important measure is the International Normalized Ratio, INR. INR is a standardized form of prothrombin time that allows for the consistent assessment of blood clotting across different laboratories. Prothrombin time assesses the general status of how quickly a blood clot forms. INR is used to evaluate the effectiveness and safety of anticoagulant therapy. Normal prothrombin time ranges from 10 to 13 seconds. If it exceeds this range, there is an increased risk of bleeding. Common scenarios for elevated prothrombin time include Liver disease, the liver is responsible for producing clotting factors, including prothrombin. Conditions like fatty liver, cirrhosis, and hepatitis can lead to deficiencies in protein synthesis, resulting in increased prothrombin time and a higher bleeding risk. The second most common cause of increased prothrombin time is vitamin K deficiency. This vitamin is crucial for synthesizing clotting factors. Deficiency is common among older adults, particularly those who consume fewer vegetables or have gastrointestinal disorders like celiac disease or Crohn's disease, or those taking antibiotics. Anticoagulant therapy is another major factor. People who take warfarin, such as those at increased risk of blood clotting like in deep vein thrombosis and atrial fibrillation, typically need lifelong anticoagulant therapy. This increases their prothrombin time, putting them at risk of bleeding. To manage this, the INR, International Normalized Ratio, is used to monitor and adjust anticoagulant actions, aiming to maintain an optimal INR level between 2 and 3. The fourth most common cause of increased prothrombin time is disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. This relatively rare condition can occur due to sepsis, trauma, cancer, or during delivery. It leads to widespread clot formation throughout the body, exhausting all clotting factors and resulting in increased prothrombin time and a higher risk of bleeding. The fifth cause includes rare genetic conditions like hemophilia, factor 7 deficiency, or other specific clotting factor deficiencies, all of which increase the risk of bleeding. Treating increased prothrombin time depends on the underlying cause. However, some general principles include Vitamin K supplementation, for vitamin K deficiency, liver problems, or during warfarin therapy, increasing vitamin K intake through supplements or injections is beneficial. Foods rich in vitamin K, such as leafy greens, spinach, kale, broccoli, brussels sprouts, and parsley, can be incorporated into daily meals to naturally boost vitamin K levels. Fresh frozen plasma, used during acute bleeding in cases of disseminated intravascular coagulation. Now, let's consider cases when prothrombin time is decreased. These cases are relatively rare but include 
Excessive vitamin K intake, this can decrease prothrombin time, leading to an increased risk of clot formation. Thrombophilia, genetic conditions like factor V Leiden or protein C deficiency can result in a hypercoagulable state and a higher risk of clots. Estrogens, these can increase the risk of clot formation. Inflammation, the inflammatory state of the body can sometimes lead to clot formations. In such cases, treatment may involve anticoagulant medications like warfarin, apixaban, and rivaroxaban. Additionally, avoiding large amounts of green leafy vegetables, green tea, and certain vegetable oils is recommended. Omega-3 fatty acids, found in fish oil supplements, have mild anticoagulant effects and can help manage clotting.